What's going on YouTube? West Hobbies RC. So today we are here with the Blade MCPX BL2. Now you guys haven't seen this helicopter for a little while. It's actually been quite a while since this helicopter has been on the channel or since this helicopter has even been flown. So we have to swap the mainframe out. So in this video we are going to be doing a full mainframe replacement. Ended up breaking one canopy tab in a little crash and now that this canopy tab is broken let me see if i can get this to focus for you right here it's driving me nuts and i know we could probably fix it glue it i'd rather just swap the mainframe out and it gives me an excuse to make a video on how to swap the mainframe out so i'm going to pause the video real quick get everything we need and then i'll be back okay so from what i can tell everything looks to be Phillips. Now, in the when you buy the BL2, it comes with this really nice little like watch Phillips screwdriver. It'll focus in on it. I guess it will not. But it comes with this little like watch Phillips screwdriver. And this seems to fit all the screws really good. Now, I have not worked on this helicopter. I've never taken it apart, so we're going to learn together. So the first thing I want to point out is that your servo plugs this is very important to remember your servo plugs so you have your your right servo is going to go to this bottom plug down here okay your elevator servo which is in the back is going to go to this top plug and then on the left side of the board if you're looking at it or the right side of the board if you're just holding it is going to be your other right servo will plug directly into here. It's pretty self-explanatory. The servos go right to where they go. Your main motor is going to connect to the top of the board. Move this head out of the way. So your main motor is going to connect here and your tail motor is going to connect here. Now there's this little bit of black like silicone rubbery stuff on the motor connector. So we will go ahead and use this stuff here. I know you guys have seen me use it in other parts of the build with wiring and stuff it works good for that kind of stuff so we'll use that later on but now first thing is first let's go ahead and let's start pulling it apart now the first thing i'm going to do is start with the tail boom so we're going to slide the tail boom out and i did notice before that i have a crack in my boom so i'm gonna probably just pinch this back together with uh, some little clamps and run some thin ca in there order another boom later but it's not that big of a deal so now we are going to take an exacto knife and we will scrape this little rubbery stuff right off of the board here there we go now we're going to scrape this little stuff right off you can get under it with an exacto knife and it comes right off and that will allow us to unplug the tail motor so now we can use a little pair of needle nose very gently. Very gently pull the tail motor out. So now from what it looks like here that the green wire goes yeah, green wire goes to top. So we'll have to remember that. If not, the motor will just run backwards. So we're gonna uncoil this and it is going to slide right off like that. So now we can take our whole tail boom assembly and set it aside. So now we have the helicopter here. So now we're gonna go ahead and there is four screws on the bottom to remove the landing gear. So let's pull all four screws out and we will set them aside. Uh, if this is your first time doing this kind of stuff, I highly recommend you put them in like a label, a little container, a little Ziploc bag works, or keep them inside the part that you're taking them out of. So if you wanted to, you could just do this when you pull the landing gear out, and then they have two little pins that hold them into the mainframe. And now if you noticed, the screws, three of them stayed in there one came out so i'll just leave that with this so now we have the screws for the landing gear and the actual landing gear itself are over here so now we're left with this so the next thing we can do is pull the main board which is going to be two screws in the front here 
pull these two screws out and the main board should pop off of here. Oh, and there's double sided tape. Foam. Okay, so now the main board is loose and our little piece fell out, the little broken part. So now we're going to unplug our servos. Again, if you're holding it, looking at it, tail boom, you know, to you, right servo goes to right side of board, left servo goes to the left side of the board, elevator servo goes to the top of the board, and main motor plugs in on the top. Very self explanatory. But again, make sure you know where everything goes. So now we're gonna take our flight controller and we are going to set it aside, try to keep the sticky as good as possible. So now we are going to have to pull all of our servos. So now we, this is an important step to remember. So now I'm just going to pop these little links off one by one and keep them attached to the servo. So we're gonna pull the right servo first Two screws, one on each corner. And then once we get this last screw out the bottom here. So now I'm going to set this servo aside. This little screw's longer than I thought it was. So I'm going to set that ser uh, servo aside and that's going to be on the right side. And I'm going to set them like that. I'll show you when I'm done. So now we're going to pull the right servo or the left servo, I'm sorry, we pulled the right servo. Get the screws out, and I'm going to set them just like I took them off of the helicopter. So right servo is gonna go on the right, left servo on the left. That way I do not forget, there's no mistaking where they might go or if the rods are different lengths or anything. So now I'm going to take my servos and I'm going to set them aside arms screws everything they're going to set aside right servo right servo okay so now we're left with this so now we have the elevator servo now the elevator servo link should pop off the same way which it does and now there's going to be two screws in the back okay so there's going to be okay so here we go so there's going to be a screw at this top here or at this bottom here and there's going to be a screw on the other side. It looks like a lot of work, guys, but it's really not. This thing comes apart really easily. It reminds me of the blade, uh, the uh, Nano. Swapping the mainframe on the Nano is easy. Also, too, something to note real quick. The uh, elevator servo wire runs up and around the mainframe, so it runs around the right side and then back over the left side of the motor. So when you're rerouting it, you know where everything goes. So now I'm going to take this. I am dropping the screws on the motor like this, just so they stay in place and I do not lose them. So now we'll set this aside. We'll set our elevator linkage aside. And now we're left with the mainframe and the motor. So now there's going to be a screw on the bottom here to pull the gear off so let's go ahead and let me get a different screwdriver because that one's not doing it so we're gonna go ahead and pull this screw that one's not gonna do it so let me find a screwdriver real quick that'll fit this screw better and i'll be right back all right i got the screw out so I didn't know that the BL2 has a aluminum main shaft and it was just Loctited in. So we got it loose, it's all that matters. Okay, so now we are going to separate this little gear here. Let me adjust the camera real quick so you guys can see better. Sorry. Okay, so that should be better. So now we're going to pull this little gear out and it should just slide little wiggling yep slides right off okay so now on the gear the long side is going to go towards the bottom of the helicopter short side is going to ride on the bearing on the very bottom of the mainframe so now we're going to set the gear aside and now we are back with a mainframe and a motor so now the whole shaft will pull right out the top just like that and now we have the motor and there's going to be two screws on the bottom 
So we need to pull these two screws out. One and two. So now there's two little screws and now the motor should pull right out the top, just like that. So now our old mainframe, the only thing that is on here that we need are these bearings. So let's pop the bearings out. So we should be able to reach in and we're not gonna be able to do it that way. So let's see if we do it like this. We can pop them out the bottom. Let me get a longer driver. Can we pop them out? Oh, yep, there's one bearing. One bearing out. And pop this one out. Two bearings out. Okay, so now we have the bearings out of the helicopter. Now, something to look at on these bearings, if I can focus in on this, if you could see here, one side is shielded. Okay, and then if we flip this bearing over, the other side is open. It's really hard to see, but the other side is open. So the open side is what goes up into the helicopter. So shielded side faces out, shielded side faces out. So now we have our old mainframe and we can set this aside. So now we're gonna get our new mainframe out of the package and then we will be right back to finish this rebuild. Okay, we got our brand new mainframe here. Got you guys at a closer angle. So we have a driver that we're gonna put the bearing on. Again, open side of the bearing goes towards the front or inside of the helicopter, push it flat and flush, and then make sure that we have the open side and we're going to push it in through the top, like so, push it right in. Now we have our bearings installed. So next is going to be the motor. So we are going to slide the motor with wires facing forward we're gonna slide the motor in like that. We should roll it over here and be able to see the screw holes, which I can. So now I will get a tiny, tiny bit of Loctite on the screws. You don't need much, just a tiny, tiny droplet. And then we can put the motor screws back in Almost lost a screw there. Bear with me. That would have not have been good. And then we're going to run the screw down into here. And after I drop it, try that again. These little. Okay, there we go. Now we are going to do the same with this screw. Put a tiny bit of Loctite on it. And these screws are little. Hold on. Very, very, very little. I got a little piece of the fuzz from my mat on the screw. Okay, so same thing. A little bit of Loctite. And we can run it down. Just put a tiny droplet. Okay, that's all we need. Quit dropping the screw because it's so small. I should have magnetized the screwdriver before doing this, but it's okay. So now we're going to run both screws down and tighten them. It will pull the motor into the housing to sit flush. Now remember, don't go overkill, just tight. So now we have our motor. We have our bearings installed. So now we're just going to assemble it the way we took it apart. So now we're gonna run the main shaft back through, just like this. And we are going to do it with the swash plate this way. And then just lift this little tab here, bring the swash plate up. Okay, so now we have the swash plate put back into place. We have the main shaft. So now we're gonna take the main gear we are going to put the main gear on. Okay, so remember, with the main gear, we need 
the flat side up, bottom long part down. So now we will find, there is a flat spot in the main shaft. If you can see that, there's a flat spot in the main gear. So it is what we like to call keyed. It will only fit one way. And of course, let me back you guys up for a second. I'm trying to do super close angles here, but it is getting very, very difficult to work on. Okay, that should be better now. Okay, so let me pull this back off. Okay, so there, like I said, there's a flat spot. And then it's keyed. So we just push this up. And then there, our gear is on. Flat spot is with the flat spot. And motor rotates like it should. So now we are going to take our screw that we took out. We're going to put a tiny, tiny bit of Loctite. We don't need much. It's just a little screw. Just a tiny bit is all you need. And we are going to get it started. Okay, started. sorry. My camera shut off. But we hand started this bottom screw. We did put Loctite in it. You want to make sure that it is not cross threaded. And just tighten it down. Snug it up. That's all we got to do. It's good. So now our main shaft is back in. Our bearings are back in. Motor is screwed back down. Now what is next? Now let's go ahead and get the servos put back in. Now I did tell you guys I would show you how I line this up. So a good way. I set it. The servos just like they came off the frame. So we have the back servo, which is the elevator. The left servo, the right servo. That way we don't get anything confused or anything messed up. So now let's put you back down. So now we're going to start with the back servo. So, of course, we have a rod here. So we're going to take the screws back off the motor that we put on just to leave them so they did not go nowhere. And then we are going to put the control rod back in and it goes into the top hole. If I remember correctly. Yes, top hole. Okay. So now, I know you guys can't see anything. Sorry. So now this goes in this way. Just like this, well, we don't want to drop this out. So push rod goes in through there like that. Then you gotta kinda hold it into place while you feed the push rod and, and servo up through the inside here. So bear with me for one second while I try to do this on camera. Is definitely not the easiest, so I'll say so far the most complicated part of this is getting these servos, this elevator servo back in. Okay, now the servo is back in. Here we go. Now, hopefully, you guys can see that. Okay, so now we are going to take one screw. Let me grab a magnetized screwdriver, which will be so much better for doing this. I should have done this from the beginning. Magnetize your screwdrivers will make your life so much easier. So we have one screw down here at the bottom. And then you have one screw at the top. So just run this down. Sorry, like that. Get it started. And then go ahead and fold the wire up out of the way. Grab your second screw here. Get it on the tip of the driver. Hold the servo and get it started. I will tell you guys from my experience, the OMP Hobby M1 is a heck of a lot easier to work on. A heck of a lot easier to work on. Okay, so run your screws down, tighten them up. Now remember this is a brand new mainframe, so you are cutting threads while you are putting these screws in. So if it's a little tight, that's okay. Okay, so now we have our elevator servo done. So now we're gonna go ahead and run the push rod back up to the swash plate and clip it back into place. Actually, we lost the O-ring, so we gotta put the O-ring back on it first. This is not very easy to do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get the rest of these servos screwed in, and then I'll be back when we go to wire it. 
All right, we got the all three servos put in. One thing I wanted to touch on real quick, it was just way too hard to try to film this and put these screws in and everything. So if you notice the bend of the push rods here, now the left servo is going to go up, go in. They have to be put back that way onto the first hole on all three servos. So now we're going to go ahead and put the board back down. So now we have our board. Let's try to raise this up and angle you down here. Let's see if this helps any. Sorry. Okay. So now we have the board. So now I left the screws in the board for this exact reason. So now we are gonna go ahead, pull our wires out of the way, and we are going to stick the two through here push the motor wires up and that should give us right where the board goes be careful with this little antenna here my personal opinion it was kind of dumb that they didn't put nothing on the antenna to help hold it from getting moved around but you're not really going to be taking this thing apart a lot unless you crash a lot and then if you do well you'll get real good at fixing it Oh, don't do what I did and just stab the board. Definitely don't want to do that. Okay, tighten it up till it squishes. Now this should move around like it does, which is perfect. So now we're going to go back to wiring. So now this is only going to go one way. It's going to be the opposite way. So you're going to do black on top, red on bottom. Sorry if you can't see this, bear with me for one second. Okay. Oh, black on top, red on the bottom, just like that. Now main motor is going to plug in just like that. And then now elevator is going to plug in like this which I guess I had it reversed. So it's gonna go black to the left, red to the right. Yep, just like that. And then left servo is going to go behind this little frame post. And I'm assuming the same way is going to be white on top, black on the bottom. And that's it. Now we have plugged all of our servos back in. Everything is hooked back up. The only thing we got left to do now is hook up the tail motor. So let's go ahead and put the landing gear back on. So that is just as simple as pushing that up, just like this. Actually, this camera angle seems to work pretty good. And then run these screws in like that one screw and two screws and oh, drop the helicopter screw number three and I have four on the table and we'll grab screw number four I will tell you guys the OMP hobby m1 is so much easier to work on Okay, so now we have it back all together. Everything works, it sits on its skids. Look at that, we did something right. All right, so I'm going to pause for a second because if you noticed I had a crack in my boom, I'm going to fix this and then I'll be back when we go to put the boom on. All right, so all we did was we just wicked some thin CA down inside the boom here. So now, remember the boom wires fold up and then it is going to slide in flat spot down. It's just going to push into the back of the helicopter like so. Once you get it to fit, it'll go all the way in here. Try not to push too hard on it. There we go. Nice tight fit. 
A lot of times uh, these booms will pop out in flight so you can put yourself a dab of like E6000 or something down in there to help hold it in place. So now we are going to take this wire and it ran this way. I don't know, I already messed that post up. Oh well, all right. So this went down and around this post like so and then we wrapped around one time and it is going to go, I remember I said green goes on top, which if we look here, we can see that there's a little bit of that black stuff, that like rubber, so we can tell that it was going the way it is. So now we are going to gently take this and we are going to push it back into its home. We're going to push all this out of the way and then I'm going to take a little bit of this fabric paint that I like to use so much. And I'm just going to, well, after I get it pushed in all the way, I thought I did have it pushed in all the way. No, I did not. Okay. And then now I'm just going to take a dab of fabric paint. And just coat the surface like so. And then I will do the same for the motor. I know that this is very useless on such a little helicopter, but something done. So there we go. Now we have swapped the mainframe. Everything is good to go. All that's left is to power it on and see how it does. But I already know that everything will work. So I'm gonna end the video off here. Hope this helps a lot of you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Have a great day.